The officials for tonight's contest, Andy Wilkinson is the referee. Line judges are Kevin McGinnis and Rob Kyle. The fourth official is Brad Campbell. These officials were selected to work this event due to their outstanding work and commitment during the season. Join the mission honoring these hardworking officials for this contest. And now, ladies and gentlemen, we ask that you please rise, remove your caps, and face the flag at the south end of the stadium near the scoreboard to honor America as the Blue Springs South Acapella Choir performs our national anthem. South High School for the second Mission Class 3 Soccer Semifinal as the Lee Summit North Broncos 23-3 on the season take on the St. Joseph's Academy Angels 15-6-1 coming into today's action. Hi everyone, Nick McKay back with you and now joined by Sporting Kansas City midfielder Bobby Convey for Today's action, the second semifinal here in the Class 3 Michigan Girls Soccer Championships. The winner will move on to take on Corriezo tomorrow as they advanced with a one to nothing win today in semifinal number one. And uh, we've got, uh, on paper, a pretty big favorite. And Lee Summit North, Bobby, a team that, uh, that comes in with a superstar player, Ali Stevenson, who scored 31 goals this year, is headed to play at Oklahoma State. And uh, they have the glittering 23-3 and record. They're ranked nationally by ESPN. But St. Joseph's Academy, a lot of history, six state titles in their background. And uh, they are going to come out and play hard as well and, and try and get into that championship game. Yeah, I think it's a. Uh, it's obviously uh, you know it looks like that they're the better team, but in, on any day, any any team can win. So we'll we'll see what happens. We've got Lee Summit North starting lineup. We mentioned that the player to watch will be number seven, Allie Stevenson, as. Uh, she has played fantastic once again, had 33 goals a year ago in her junior season, was a first-team All-State performer, and has really backed that up with another fine season. St. Joseph's Academy, led in scoring by Kaylee Needers. Coming into today's action, Haley Cavanaugh also among the leaders in goals scored. It's Kavanaugh with 11 goals, Magaletta with 11 goals, and Nieder's the sophomore, actually just 10 goals. So they've got a little bit more of a balanced scoring attack, whereas Stevenson will be the main focus of the offense for Lee Summit North. St. Joseph's Academy in the all-green kits for the Angels. Lee Summit North wearing whites with the maroon numbers. St. Louis versus Kansas City, always a fun rivalry, and that's what we've got here today. St. Joseph's Academy, a Catholic school out of the St. Louis metro area, actually located in St. Louis proper.
Bobby, what are the opening moments of a uh, big match like this? You're playing for a right to go to the state championship and uh, trying to get some of the uh, nervous energy out and, uh, and just try and settle into the game. Yeah, I think you said it correctly. I think that, uh, that both teams are obviously going to be a little bit nervous to start the game, but uh, once you get into it and, and get into the flow and, and uh, you know, use energy in, a, in, in the right direction to going forward, I think that you settle down a bit and, and, uh, and, and start trying to play. For St. Joseph's Academy, a bit of an underdog, as we've talked about. Uh, what are some of the different strategies that you employ when you're uh, when you're the team that uh, maybe isn't the most talented, but uh, still you want to give yourself the best opportunity to win? Yeah, I think you know sometimes it comes as an advantage because the other team maybe uh, doesn't take you as seriously as they should, and and you can kind of uh, you know start a game quick as the underdog and, and maybe get a get an early goal, maybe maybe right here. And, uh, you know, and, and uh, put them on the back foot. Run out there for Kaylee Needers, the sophomore forward. Put it right on goal. And Maddie Dobbins, starting goalkeeper for Lee Summit North, is split time with the sophomore Bailey Dorflinger. Lee Summit North. We'll get the throw in. Anna Johnson put it in play. Now here's Jade Gifford. Over to Brooke Burris. Burris plays it ahead. There's Allie Stevenson. Been told throughout her career she's too small. She's just 5'3", but there's an opening. And just wide on the shot from Ashley Licata. Licata could be described as... Well, this will be a reach, but how about Robin to Stevenson's Batman? She, is, uh, she has been a uh, solid player. Thank Three goals and a couple of assists in the playoff run for Lee Seven North. Almost got her fourth goal of the postseason right there. Yeah, very good ball across there. Uh, you know, maybe she rushed it a little bit on that shot, but it's good to, uh, you know, always create chances early in a game. Summit North able to take possession once again. Stevenson. Here's Courtney Licata. Playing it up to Brianna Angler. Extra numbers in the back for Lee Summit North. Now they'll play it forward. Individual work by Stevenson. And now we'll see the second time Kelsey Ponder, the freshman, playing goalkeeper for St. Joseph's Academy. You started young as well, including uh, your MLS career. Yeah, I was... Uh you know, turned pro at 16. I, I played in high school in, uh, you know, in eighth grade. I, I was actually allowed to play in high school and, and then my freshman year. And then, uh, you know, then I was off with the national team. So when I was, uh, you know, some of some of these kids' age, I was, um, you know, already already gone, gone with the national team. But I had my, uh, my experience in high school as well. Five minutes into this semifinal match. No scoring so far. And now here's the Angels. Cross to the middle. He cleared out by Lee Summit North. Any advantage you see for either side here in the early going as Stevenson once again breaks out? Yeah, I think obviously their game plan is to, is to get it to her as much as possible. She seems to uh, you know, be trying to, to take as, as many defenders on, maybe... Maybe just get her head up a little bit, look to look to play because the tension is going to be on her. So, uh, you know, other than that, I think that that it's it's been pretty even. Played ahead for the Angels. Now knocked out of play by Hannah Johnson, defender for the Broncos. 
East Summit North hasn't allowed a goal since May 1st. Now, that's eight straight shutouts for the Broncos. So Stevenson, a dynamite weapon up front, but it always starts, doesn't it, Bobby, with uh, preventing the other team from scoring? Yeah, I think so. I think, uh, you know, a strong, a strong defense obviously allows to, to uh, you know, create, create chances going forward and, and maybe, maybe win some games 1-0. One, one you know, obviously that, that's a, a main thing throughout a season, how, how teams do well. So obviously it's great for them that they haven't, haven't given up a goal in the last eight, and, and I'm sure they'll be hoping to do the same thing here as well. Good play in the back from Lee Summit North. And so far, good defense in the early going for the Broncos in this one. And we'll move on to the state championship game tomorrow. Stevenson out wide. Chipping it ahead. But Licata was running down the left side. We saw in the first game, Springfield Glendale, an underdog, really packed it in defensively and was not very aggressive trying to push the ball forward. That's not really what we've seen here early from St. Joseph's Academy. They've looked for openings to push it when they can. Yeah, I think so. I don't, I don't think they, they came into this thinking they were an underdog, which is, which is the best way to go into any game when, when you know, maybe some people are expecting to lose. So I think they've, they've really kept the, uh, kept the pressure on and, and obviously are, are putting, uh, putting the team under, under a little bit. 12th trip to the Final Four for St. Joseph's Academy. First since 2008. Last won a title back in 2002. They've won, won it all six times. Broncos trying to chase it down in their own third. That's Gifford. Has it taken away by Claire Champion. Now Champion down towards the corner. Hey, photographer. Thank you. Throw in opportunity here for. St. Joseph's. They'll do it again. Champion. Challenge from Lee Summit North. Can't clear it out though. What are you trying to do differently there on a corner throw in as opposed to the corner kick? Some of the different strategies. Yeah, I think, you know, on, on those situations, it's, it's always good, uh, you know, to, to run down there in the corner, hit it, hit it off the defender, get, it, get a throw for your team. It's a positive move and, uh, you know, obviously keeps, it, keeps the other team, uh, you know, defending. So that's, that's what you want, make them, make them a little more tired. And, uh, you know, you just kind of have to have a little bit more movement there. I think they were standing, standing a little bit, waiting for the ball, maybe a little bit more movement off the throw. That's, that's kind of where you get the most advantage. Sporting Kansas City midfielder Bobby Convey joining me in the broadcast booth here as we've got the Class 3 semifinal number two here in girls soccer. Community of Blue Springs hosting all classes of girls championships this weekend. Both at Blue Springs High and here at Blue Springs South. Stevenson quick step and puts it just wide. Long shot there from Stevenson, but created a little bit of separation with some quick moves. Yeah, I think that was that was probably obviously their best chance so far. I think if, if they can can get her closer to the goal, get, get both their forwards obviously closer to the goal, then then there's a better chance of, of those uh, of those shots going in. So keep keep pushing forward. Hopefully, you know, win this header here, and, and they'll be farther up the field. A 
here's Allie Stevenson once again. Flips it behind her to McKenzie Kellogg. But taken away by the Angels. Champion. Plays it forward. And now Kavanaugh will chase it down. Kavanaugh trying to get a run, but he's Summit North able to disrupt that. Kavanaugh still with it, though. Yeah, I mean, I think the, the first touch there obviously was, uh, was was not the best. I think that the, the defense has done extremely well so far in, in, in negating any chances that, that, that they've been able to have. So it's, uh, you know, keep it keep it a little bit closer, maybe get your head up and, and uh, you know, have some have someone running off the ball and, and, and be able to, you know, to, to play maybe a 1-2 and, and, and get a chance. Keeper Dobbins will have a kick here. 13th minute of action, couple of substitutes for St. Joseph's Academy. Not the same rigid substitution rules here on the high school level as uh, you have to deal with on the professional level. Yeah, that was something I wasn't uh, wasn't used to. I've never, I haven't seen. Uh, Three or, three or four subs at once before uh, in, in a long time. So I think it's I think it's good when, for the for the younger younger players because it obviously keeps keeps people a little bit fresher and, and allows uh, you know allows the game to flow a little bit more. Allie Stevenson with a run. It's taken down, no call, and now Stevenson will get it back. Her teammates, you can tell, really look for her. Yeah, I think so. I think obviously uh, you know being a top scorer that's, that's something something that's kind of been instilled in them and, and obviously with her being the top scorer she's she's earned that uh you know in that respect so hopefully uh you know she, she can get one for her team tonight because they're really looking forward you know really looking to her what is it like when you've got a superstar player that uh that really it's it's your job as a as a teammate of that player to make sure they they get the ball in a position where they can score it i think like you said from from the beginning with you know their defense is has uh, done well for the last eight games, and, and and when that happens, you start farther up the field, uh, you know, and, and you retain possession more. As a forward, you kind of get stranded on an island a little bit, and and you kind of rely on your teammates to get you the ball. So, if they continue to keep winning the ball farther and farther up the field, she'll uh, you know she'll be able to to have a few more chances because you know they're they'll be able to to maybe play some through balls through her instead of having her have to dribble through you know two or three players. Just a, a different kind of game than uh, basketball or football, for instance. Wow. Interesting throw in. Yeah, that was very interesting. I may have to break that one down a little bit. But uh, team sport with 11 players on the field, and, and unlike football, you don't have just a, a few ball handlers. Everybody can, can get a touch on the ball, so it's... Uh, it's a harder sport to just take over than than uh, those other two, perhaps. Yeah, for sure. I think that's a, that's definitely a, a key thing in soccer is that it doesn't matter if you have one, you know, one or two, you know, very good players. You uh, you need you need everyone to uh, you know everyone to play well at, at, at the same time. Stevenson won't be able to chase that one down. Instead, retreating to get it is Hinchel. Summit North with it. Allie Stevenson. Her pass intercepted. But the Broncos get it back. I think when we watch you guys play at the professional level, it's... Uh, easy to underestimate how difficult it is to control it as precisely as you guys do with uh, maybe six, seven, eight passes in a row and, and being able to possess the ball. And, and it just shows uh, these are the highest skill levels in high school soccer here in Missouri and uh, very difficult to string together those kinds of passes. Yeah, I think so. I think obviously you know, there's, there's a big difference between uh, you know professional and, and high school, but I think it's a, it's a little bit difficult here for 
for the girls out there because it's uh, you know on turf and the ball's running pretty pretty quickly. Uh, you know, and they're still obviously a little bit nervous with you know with only halfway here through the first half. Uh, you know, trying to trying to maybe settle down into the rhythm that that the coach uh, kind of wanted from the beginning of, of the game. So I think it's that, that's kind of a, a bit of energy. Maybe just both teams need to settle down a bit and and uh, and look for the open player. It is an interesting point that the, uh, the turf, I know Lee Summit North used to playing on a similar type of surface, but a lot of the high schools have gone to uh, these multi-purpose types of synthetic surfaces. Not sure what St. Joseph's Academy plays on, but... Yeah, whether it's a high school or, or a professional level, it's... It's still it's still different when you uh, when you play on turf. The, the ball moves a, bit, a little bit faster. It's it's difficult to get good touches on it. And, and uh, you know I do the do the same thing in, in our games when we, when we play on turf. Stevenson tripped up from behind. And a pretty dangerous area for a restart here. Yeah, if you see here, obviously it was a, a good turn. Uh, a good turn, you know, at, at first to, to get her body in between, you know, the, the, the defender and the ball. And maybe maybe a, a little bit of a dive there, but that's, that's what you're taught as a forward to do to create these chances. And this is obviously, you know, the best chance of, of the game so far. 26 yards out. Stevenson will put it in play. Denied. Shot was a bit wide. I think Ponder wasn't for sure. She seemed quite intent on... Stopping it, not sure she knew exactly where the post was as she moved to her left. Yeah, but it was a obviously good save. You know, the first first real shot that she's that she's had in the, in the game. So, you know, maybe maybe a, a little bit overzealous there, but it's, it's better to be safe than sorry. Back come the Angels now. And in our first semifinal, we saw Coriezu really dominate possession for much of the game. This one's been pretty back and forth. Yeah, I think so. I think obviously the you know both teams need to there we go switch it out. You know that that's that's where the space is when when you know when the game is very compact in the middle. You have to have to get the ball out wide and, and use the flanks to your advantage. And and you see here that they've obviously been able to advance the ball up. With, uh, with just a simple switch of, of play. Lee Summit North likes to attack from the flanks rather than just up the middle. What are some of the differences in those types of strategies? I think that, that obviously, you know, when you have uh, maybe some quicker players out wide, you know, that's that's where you try to get at, get at the other team's defenders and, and get some crosses in, get get a, uh, you know, three, four people in the box and, and uh, you know, cause, cause havoc a little bit when you have a, have a good cross. So, uh, you know, when, when you go down the middle, it's, it's usually pretty difficult because most teams nowadays can, uh, you know, can negate that because they have, you know, good numbers, good numbers in the middle and you're taught that, uh, you know, when your team's under pressure to, uh, to make sure the ball doesn't go down the middle and, and make sure it goes out wide. So I think, you know, as, as, uh, as you play longer, you realize that, that the space you know, is, is more more out wide than it is uh, straight down the middle. Midway point of the first half. No score here in the early going between St. Joseph's Academy and Lee Summit North. Lee Summit North. Their sixth appearance Number three, clear in the semifinal round of the state tournament. Number they were 10, the first Michelle team and number 20, outside of St. Louis to win state championship in the big class. Their only title back in 2000. Beat Lindbergh 2-1. to one. And there you see Coach Tim Richardson. The Summit North was last in a championship game, Bobby, in 2009, and they've been thinking about it ever since. They lost to Incarnate Word 2-1 to one in penalty kicks. And Ashley Licata, then a freshman, had a shot in regulation that would have won the match. 
that uh, deflected off the post and trickled across the mouth of the goal and has been asked about it for two years, so she's looking for redemption here today. Stevenson with a run. Stevenson cut down, great play by Kelsey Ponder, the keeper, to come up and make it. Yeah, I think it was good for her to come off her line there. She uh, made it, you know, here's, you see a good, good ball through with the outside of your foot, skipped by the defender, and uh, you know, right here, ball gets a little bit away from her on the turf, but it's a, a definitely a, a, a good play by the goalkeeper. You've been playing soccer long enough that uh, I'm sure you've had that shot that wasn't meant to go in, that uh, stuck in your craw for a lot of years, and uh, that's kind of been the way it has been for, for Lakata. Had uh, potentially the game winner just ding off the post. Yeah, that's a tough one, obviously. And, and uh, you know, like you said, looking, looking for redemption in this game here because, uh, you know, it, once you win, it, it seems to uh, it seems to allow you to forget all the uh, you know all the losses and all the, all the uh, you know maybe mis misplaced shots or misplaced passes in previous games and it allows people to remember uh, you know you guys winning instead of uh, you know maybe a missed opportunity. In the lineup for St. Joseph's Academy, number 21, Been Mary Grace Rash knocked out in the quarterfinal round the last two years, so haven't made it back to this point. Ball played into the area that's taken by Lee Summit North now. Most of the Broncos' opportunities seem to have been created by Stevenson being great individually, but now here's a pretty good ball. Dangerous spot. Finally cleared out by the Broncos' defense. Yeah, I think they've been they've been very solid throughout this, you know, throughout this this first half here. That you can, you can really tell that that they work on that in, in training. Or the coach coach has them out there for sure because they're all positioned well. They you know they, they look for the pass instead of just clearing it every time. And uh, you know they're they're all in pretty good spots. Here's a shot on goal. Dobbins, solid. St. Joseph's Academy shot by number 32, Kelly McLaughlin. Saved by Dobbins. Angels will have Schwartz heading down the side. It's once again played into the area. Angels have had some looks in here. Now here's a little bit of space for Claire Champion, but sends it wide. Yeah, obviously it's a, it's a it's it's good to be be positive and, and, and look for the shot, but maybe if you just uh, you know there are two of her two of her players were there at the back post. If you uh, you know if you see here two of the back play two of the people in the back post just chip it up, and it's you know it's always it's always giving giving your teammates a chance there to uh, to finish it off. Going here for Lee Summit North. There's Stevenson. He's named the Missouri Gatorade Player of the Year from ESPN. Big honor for her. She's one of the 50 best recruits in the country, according to the old worldwide leader. Headed to Oklahoma State next year. 33 goals last year, 31 this year. That's an impressive back-to-back -back total. Yeah, in, in, in any level of of, uh, of soccer, that's that's a great return as a as a forward. So she should be uh, very proud of herself. And here's Champion again, trying to get the cross. Lee Summit North got just a piece of it. Break up the timing there. Yeah, but I think it's been good. She's been very active down down the right side. And uh, you know, and I think that's obviously where, where most of their chances have been coming from. So if she can continue to get forward like that, it'll, it'll really help her team out. Good job by Stevenson to chase it down, showing her speed, and plays it into the middle. Couldn't connect with Brooke Burris. Foul going to be called on Broncos, and Champion will. Champion goes down. Stevenson just did keep it in play there and a solid cross. 
Back to action. Angels. Another deflection. Slow roller. Dobbins handles it easily. Yeah, maybe she, she could have looked looked wide there. Maybe slide that wide. You know, allow her, allow her teammate to cross it in. But like I said, it's, it's always good Shana to be Nolan positive. Angel, trying, number 21, trying to create your own, Mary Grace your own Ragdale. Shot. Saved by Maddie Dobbins. Stevenson has shown good speed. That's uh, clearly one of the assets that have made her so desirable to colleges at the next level. Yeah, I think that, that uh, you know, at, at any level, it's, it, you know, it's all about athleticism and, and uh, you know, and how well you, you can use that athleticism to your team's advantage. And, and so far, I think she's had, a, a, you know, some, some good plays, but it's been a little bit difficult because you can see their team has, has been, uh, you know, St. Joseph has been, has been staying pretty far back here, so it's not really allowing her the space to, to run in behind them. Kaylee Needers. The header that uh, just went wide. Yeah, again, it's a, a good opportunity here. Great ball in, uh, just just wide there, and, and obviously that's that's a good chance. Any any time it's at zero zero, you can always get the ball in the box, and dangerous things will happen. Their champion with the feed, and Needers could just not quite get turned around on it to square it up to the goal. And now here's Champion again. Champion has been active. Schwartz up the far side plays it back to champion little two man game over there on the far side and now Schwartz has a pass intercepted yeah maybe try to try to get that ball in a little bit faster because as you as you dribble and, and keep trying to take someone on out wide, it, you know everyone kind of gets stagnant there in the middle and just stands around waiting for the ball. And the timings of the run are kind of off. So maybe just take a touch there and try to uh, try to get it in a bit quicker. Ashley Lakata trying to find Brooke Burris, but just wide for her. Taken away by St. Joseph's Academy. Down into the corner. Ragsdale lays it over and now here's Magaletta. Champion getting another touch. Now looking for Magaletta again. She chases it down before it goes out and now deflected off of Jay Gifford. Gifford and it will be Corner kick. Yeah, that was a very positive play there. When you know she she got her head up, took a touch, and tried to cross it in. The ball didn't didn't go in, but it deflected out for a corner, which is a, a dangerous opportunity. Where you can can allow uh, allow your team to get a, a, a bunch of bodies in the box to hopefully uh, you know get ahead on this. It'll be champion putting it in play. Boy, dangerous across the mouth of the goal. Nobody. Got ahead on it for Lee Summit North, and it just kind of sat there for a while, but Angel's not able to take advantage. It was a great ball in here. Very good ball in. Just misses everybody, but you, know, you see in, on, on, on those opportunities that you get in the corner to, uh, you know, to get the ball in the box, it's, it's, it's maybe the difference in a game, uh, you know, making the game 1-0 and, and, uh, you know, and, and changing it. So... Any, any opportunities you get to, uh, to have some, some corner kicks, it's, it's always good. Cavanaugh might have had the best look at it for St. Joseph's Academy. Now here's Ashley Licata. Gifford battling for it for Lee Summit North, but it's taken by St. Joseph's Academy. Magaletta into the area, but Neater's not able to handle it. And it trickles forward to Dobbins, the keeper, who punts it ahead. <laughs> Kenzie Kellogg ahead to Ali Stevenson. Could not screen the defender there. And Anna Martin took it away. 
Yeah, very, very good play there, stepping forward. As a defender, that's what uh, that's what the coach expects you to do. So, I'm sure she'll uh, you know in halftime get a get a pat on the back for that one. And it's going to go across the end line. It will be last touched by St. Joseph's. Entering the lineup for St. Joseph's Academy, number twelve, Allie Trost. And number 27, Cassie Flynn. Three, four straight shutouts, rather, for Lee Summit North in postseason play. Beat Blue Springs 2-0 and St. Teresa's Academy 2-0 in district play to win that championship. 3-0 win over Ray Peck and 4-0 over Park Hill South in quarterfinals. Yeah, without watching those games, you can see that they're very organized at the back, like I said before. It seems as if the coach had, you know, really, really has been working on, on that with them because, you know, any, any time uh, St. Joseph's has a, a dangerous chance, it, it, they normally have, uh, you know, at least two defenders around the ball. Eight straight wins for St. Joseph's Academy, 13-2-1 since a loss to Eureka on April 9th that really seemed to turn their season around and Bobby, it was kind of a circle the wagons moment where they kind of decided they needed to make some changes, not only in strategy and personnel, but in uh, maybe desire and effort. And they managed to turn their season around. And what's it like when you come to a crossroads as a player and, and have to decide what kind of season you're going to have? You know, I think it's difficult because obviously at, at all times everybody wants to do well, but that's uh, that's not always going to happen. I think that's, that's obviously where the coach coach comes into play. You know, talks to his players and and uh, you know, or, and and kind of uh, you know sees you know sees where everyone everyone's heads at and and and, and sometimes you do need to make changes at, at every level. Uh, you don't, you don't want to be the one that uh, that's coming off the field, but sometimes it's best for the team and and obviously they turned it around. Close call there for Lee Summit North defensively as Needers was right there in position. Maureen McVeigh, the head coach for St. Joseph's Academy. 500 wins in her career. And nearly 400 of those at St. Joseph's Academy. And that's, again, another, another extremely uh, impressive stat to be in one place for that long and have, have, that, many, uh, have that many wins is, is very notable. Love the throw in there again. Now in play and St. Joseph's Academy trying to get organized and move it ahead. McVeigh about to be inducted into the St. Louis Soccer Hall of Fame. Be the first woman with that distinction. So there you see Maureen McVeigh. Halfway to a thousand wins. That's a lot of that's a lot of W's. Yeah, I think whether whether you're male or female, it's it's uh it shouldn't matter. I think that uh that's that's very impressive to uh to have that many wins at, uh, at, at one place, then uh, it's, it's definitely deserved. The team was able to answer the call when uh, the season was in danger of really going sideways. Instead, they rallied, and as I said, 13-2-1 in their last 16 games, including eight straight victories. They were the third seed in their district but uh, beat second seeded Kirkwood three to one and then top seeded Narex Hall one to nothing. Beat Northwest Cedar Hill five to nothing in sectionals and then really seemed like a difficult challenge playing highly regarded incarnate word and beat them two to one in double overtime. So on paper, just if you look at the records again, Lee Summit North, probably the team that you would just look at it and expect to win, but uh, St. Joseph's Academy has been playing much, much better as of late and has beat some pretty strong teams over the last few weeks to be in this position. Yeah, that definitely is a, uh, a great run for them. Uh, you know, and I think that's, that's, it's kind of shown in this game where they, 
uh, whether they are the underdog or not, it doesn't doesn't seem like it to me. It seems seems pretty even and almost almost the edge to them with uh, you know with with getting forward and, and creating creating chances. They've certainly been more organized in their attacks as opposed to East Summit North, which has uh, just tried to use the athleticism and skill of Stevenson to create scoring opportunities. Wouldn't you say? Yeah, I think so. I think that that is. It's difficult sometimes when you have one player that, that maybe uh, is supposed to be better than everyone else because the ball, you know, always, always seems to, to, to have to go in, in that direction. Where, whereas uh, St. Joseph, you know, has, is, is more, has, has been more organized, more, uh, you know, more of a, of a, of a team, uh, you know, possession game. And, and it, it, it's nothing, nothing to say bad about Lee Summit, but it, it's difficult when there is, you know, one person that's always supposed to be... Uh, be doing everything because the other players maybe uh, maybe relax a little bit and wait wait for that player to do something. So now here's the Broncos. Here the midfield stripe as we go under three minutes to play. Here in this first half, low scoring first semifinal as well. A scoreless tie in that game was not broken until the 78th minute. Yeah, I think think Lee Summit needs to do this a little bit more. You know, they they kept the ball there in the back instead of just looking for the for the first time ball forward and and retain possession a little bit there. And, and uh, you know, if they they can continue to do that and, and wear down uh, St. Joseph's defense, then then they'll they'll be able to create create more chances. Long run forward for Kaylee Needers. Finally broken up. And basketball, which is two minutes. sport I'm a little more familiar with. You'll have to educate me on, on this one, but uh, you're, you're told defensively to stop the ball. If somebody's dribbling with the basketball, you've got to stop them. I assume it's the same, uh, same general idea in, in soccer. And there we saw Neaters a long time with the ball before somebody got in front of her to deflect it away. Yeah, I think obviously they're, they're playing, uh, playing. Uh, you know, St. Joseph's playing a, a little bit farther, uh, farther back on the field. So it's, uh, you know, it, it's it's one of those things where there's, you know, a minute left in the first half. The, the players are a little bit tired, so and she had had a little bit more space maybe than the coach would have liked. But again, it's you know a minute left here, so it, you know maybe maybe they're just a little bit tired. Good play there by Burris to get it, but. Immediately heads down to Ponder, who picks it up easily. Now Ponder punted away with 39 minutes gone by here in this first half. Soccer matches, 80 minutes in length here in high school. Stevenson, the first touch in a while, tries to cross it over and has it deflected away. Showed some frustration. Yeah, I don't think you need to get frustrated after that. That was a, that was a good play. Uh, you know, obviously the, the defender just got a nick on the ball, but if, if she doesn't get that nick, then she's in on a breakaway. So continue to uh, be positive, continue to look, look to do those, uh, you know, look to continue to make those runs. There's a foul and a yellow card coming. Hard tackle. Look at it there. Oh, oh. St. Joe's Academy Yellow Card. A tough call there. Cassandra Flynn. Flynn, freshman. Yeah, it was a, obviously got a got a touch on the ball there. The ref maybe got got that one wrong, but it was a uh, you know it was a, a strong challenge and and uh, you know we saw it differently, I guess. Now Flynn will come out of the game. Entering the lineup for St. Joseph's Academy number three, Claire Champion. And Claire Champion, who we saw a lot of in the first part of this game will come in. I'm going to put it in the area and a shot here was way off the mark. Courtney Licata Ten seconds. couldn't straighten Nine, it out. Eight, seven, six, Final five, moments of four, the first half. Three, two, one. And we will end the first 40 minutes of play without a score. That's the end of the Back and half. forth action, but no scoring here 
in the first half of play between Lee Summit North and St. Joseph's Academy. We will take a break and come back with some first half thoughts as we continue our coverage of the Misha Girls Soccer Championship. No score after one half of play. St. Joseph's Academy and Lee's Summit North back and forth action, but neither team able to find the back of the net. And so we go to our second half here in a few moments with our score tied at zero. Here at Blue Springs South High School for the second of our Misha Class 3 soccer semifinals. The winner of this match will move on to the championship game tomorrow, taking on Koryezu. Right now, we're no closer to knowing who that representative will be in the championship game. Lee Summit North and St. Joseph's Academy scoreless after the first half. St. Joseph's Academy and Lee Summit North back and forth action, but no scoring in the first half of play here in the second semifinal in Misha Class 3. We'll be back with the second half after this from Blue Spring South.
Second half underway here at Blue Springs South. St. Joseph's Academy and Lee Summit North playing to a scoreless draw in the first half. Second half will decide matters. Our first semifinal was decided not until the 78th minute when Koryezu got a goal to win that match and advance to tomorrow's championship game here at Blue Spring South. They'll play the winner of this match up here in the other Class 3 semifinal. Nick McCabe, sporting Kansas City midfielder Bobby Convey here with me as we've got St. Joseph's Academy possessing the ball here early and got to look at some first half stats and it looks like uh, it's been St. Joseph's Academy getting the better of the shots at least uh, in that first half. Yeah, I think so. I think, you know, obviously both both teams had had some 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 pretty good chances, but you know, it was it was more of a, a stalemate. So hopefully this second half will will, will be a little bit more uh, a little bit more energetic and and uh, you know, as, it, as the teams get tired and as the game goes on, maybe a few more chances will, uh, will, will create themselves. Did have the one yellow card issued in that first half, very late. Hard tumble, looked like maybe the foul wasn't as hard as it looked like based upon the tumble. Yeah, I think so. But it's a difficult one. Obviously the referee was behind the, uh, behind the player, so he's a little bit blocked, but uh, it, it ended up being a, 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 good, uh, a good tackle of the ball, but sometimes it happens. The ref gets it wrong sometimes. I don't think the uh, sporting Kansas City fans ever disagree with the refereeing <laughs> out there, do they? No, I mean, obviously, <laughs> as long as they, uh, they, they keep the game going for us, it's, uh, you know, they're, they're happy about it, but... It's uh, referee's a difficult job. I would, I don't, I don't think I'll be signing up to be a ref when, uh, when I'm done playing. I'll tell you one thing that kind of jumps off the page as you look at it is uh, six different substitutes used by St. Joseph Academy. It looks like every player went all the way for Lee Summit North. Could that depth be a concern as this second half wears on and Lee Summit North maybe a bit more prone to fatigue? Yeah, I, th I think obviously the, the coach knows his players, so he, uh, you know, he knows knows what they can do and what their limits are. Uh, you know, th th there's only you know this game and obviously one more game. So at at, at, at any time you, you try to try to have your best players on the field as much as possible. But I think you know St. Joseph has uh, you know has, has had a little bit more energy with uh, being able to you know sub a few players. Ali Stevenson couldn't get it cleanly there. It's deflected out by St. Joseph Academy. No score here in this match. We have 36 minutes and change left here to play in the second half of action. St. Joseph's Academy and Lee Summit North battling here in the Class 3 semifinal. That's a pretty good shot, but easily handled by Dobbins. Angel shot on goal by number 13, Allie Dressel. Shot taken by... Saved by Dobbins. Allison Dressel for St. Joseph's Academy. Yeah, I think they've come out here with, uh, with a bunch of energy. They, uh, they to start, start the second half. They've been they did pretty well in the first half, so they've come out attacking and they've created a few chances here in the first few minutes. Two hot teams battling it out. Lee Summit North hasn't lost since mid-April. Dropped a 4-2 decision to St. Thomas Aquinas on the 13th of April. Since then, they've reeled off 13 straight. St. Joseph's Academy has won eight straight themselves. Yeah, it's, it seems that way. You know, not not having uh, you know, seen too many of their games this year of both teams, they, they both seem you know pretty evenly matched. I would say so, so far today, with uh, you know with both teams you know feeling feeling pretty good about themselves. The Summit North played for a state championship in 09. Had to go all the way over to St. Louis to uh, play that one and 
We're happy to have it here in Jackson County this time. And here's Ali Stevenson. Some nifty moves to get free. And oh, a very difficult save made by Kelsey Ponder. Just did get a piece of that one as Stevenson almost broke this scoreless tie. Great individual play there. Uh, you can see here coming up on the replay. It, 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 great individual play. Good ball through. You know, a very good touch. Takes takes the first defender on. You know, get gets by the second there. You know, a shot to the far post and a great save by the by the keeper. Now St. Joseph's Academy putting the ball in play, but Lee Summit North able to take it away. Brooke Burris puts a head on it. Stevenson manages to control it. Trying to get around the defender, and Stevenson has it taken away. Good defense there by St. Joseph's Academy. Another very, very good play there from, you know, out of out of the back for St. Joseph's. It's, you know, a, a tough ask to. And now an opening for Lakata, and Lakata delivers high. They yeah, just got under that. She, she, uh, she saw that far post wide open and, and uh, you know, try to try to put a little bit high. Good touch in the middle. You know, she got her head up. Good, very good pass. She's got to take her, you know, very good touch there, but but just skied it. Just enough of a challenge from Hinchel, who took the ball away from Stevenson on the last ball. Stevenson ahead now and again challenged this time by Anna Martin who gets it back for St. Joseph's Academy. No score. Here at Blue Springs South in our second class three semifinal. Coriezu, all girls school out of St. Louis awaits the winner of this match. Here's Lakata ahead again. Two on three for Lee Summit North. Breaking through players and now a chance for Burris, but she couldn't pull the trigger quickly enough. Mackenzie Kellogg now has it up top. And now Burris, almost a frustration shot there, I think. Really, Bobby, it seemed like uh, she had enough of an opening there to try and put that on goal there, but wasn't able to pull the trigger. Yeah, I think you're right. I think that, uh, you know, the, the, the play was just a, a little bit slow and, uh, you know, allowed, allowed St. Joseph to get, get more players behind the ball. And, and obviously when that happens, it gets frustrating as an attacker when there's, you know, four, five, six players around the ball and you can't get a, uh, a clean shot off. Into the 49th minute of play. Still no score. Coriezu advanced with a goal in the 78th minute of an 80-minute match here in girls high school soccer. About two and a half minutes left when the Chargers got that goal. A little bit of a, a miscommunication there, but as you can see, when, when you play the ball out wide, a, a good combination on, on the right there. Continue to run down the line and, and gets a, uh, you know, gets a, a corner out of nothing and, and again Number allows seven. Lexi allows their team to get up the field, you know, have a, have a little bit of a rest uh, defensively and, and maybe uh, maybe get a, get ahead on this. Alexia Boshirt will put it in play. Good challenge there from Stevenson, but we'll go across the end line. It will be another corner kick for Boshirt. Played the last one short, now puts this one in front of the goal and a Shot there from Kaylee Neeters in traffic, but deflected away. Dobbins was screened from the play. Angel Lee Seven North, 20, fortunate that shot did not block. result in a St. Joseph's goal. Yeah, for sure. I think in, in games like this where it's where it's pretty close, you know, set pieces are usually what uh, what's what, what makes a difference in the game. So the more you know, the more corners, the more free kicks they can get up the field, the better uh, the better they are. St. Joseph's Academy holds it in, and now a shot on goal to Dobbins is easily handled. And here's a look at Bosher putting it in play. A very good ball, good, good, good clearance. 
you know, they, they had a few few girls there on the line, so it was a uh, you know an, an all around good play by by you know by by both teams. It was initially Brianna Engler for Lee Summit North that got her head on it to try and knock it out, but then bounced right to Neaters who got a shot. And now here's Neaters again, but taken away by Lee Summit North. Neaters still battling for it. Down goes the Broncos player Gifford. And Neaters from 30 yards out shot by number 20. can't connect. Goes high. Yeah, I think that St. Joseph's always been on the front foot here for the first you know, 11 minutes of, uh, of the second yeah, half. I think, you know, they, they ended the first half well, and, and you know, they're, 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 the, they're the aggressor right now. So you can see, obviously, with you know, six players and, you know, up the field, they really want to uh, they try to get a goal here pretty soon. Meters again. Ahead, this is Kavanaugh. Kavanaugh now double teamed, and it's taken away by the Broncos. Mackenzie Kellogg over there. Kavanaugh somehow got it back. And now Bosher. Lakata with a nifty move. Lakata out into the middle of the field. Plays it ahead for Stevenson, who's dangerous in space, obviously. Stevenson. It was a good look, though. Obviously got, got her head up. It was, you know, uh, the defender just read it well, but I think... Uh, you know, as the uh, you know the player, the other team's looking out for you. You draw a lot of attention, and uh, you know maybe maybe if you know just just look up that that you know second before and and, and find one of your teammates when the attention's on you. It it, it creates space and, and chances for uh, for everybody else. Returning to the lineup for St. Joseph's. She's looking Academy. for Burris, but 12, deflected out by St. Joseph's, who again will substitute three different players, maybe four. That was four subs. Wholesale changes for the Angels. There's the head over heels throw in. Getting a reaction from our crew here in the booth. Yeah, I haven't, uh, haven't seen that since since I was obviously a, a lot younger and, and youth team, but uh, she's, she's clearly been, been working on that, and, and it's maybe something that, that the coach sees as a you know, an effective tool for, for their team. Obviously, I, I mean, I assume the idea being she's able to get a little more velocity on it by getting some uh, momentum, whipping her whole body forward. Yeah, I don't, I don't know if I could do that. I'm not as, uh, as flexible as, as that, but it, uh, it definitely allows her to get, get more, uh, you know, more distance. Here's Stevenson, deep penetration and deflected away by Ponder. Yeah, another, another great individual play there by Stevenson getting forward, taking players on. But again, the, the, uh, you know, the goalie of uh, St. Joseph has come, come up with a, another great save to, uh, to bail her team out. Well, collision there late between Stevenson and Ponder. And now here's a ball played out wide for Courtney Licata. Tries to cross it, nobody there, but the St. Joseph's defense can't clear it out initially. And now... Finally, the Angels get it away from the danger zone. I think they got to, uh, you know, they, they've just got to create a little bit more possession. They've been under pressure a little bit there, you know, at least some of for, for the last five, ten minutes, and you know, maybe try to settle the game down a little bit, uh, you know, and. and and, and try to uh, you know maintain possession, get a little bit of a rest throughout the game, and and then you know spring spring an attack like they did you know a minute or so ago. Still no score here in semifinal number two, but Burris ahead of the pack. Burris looking for the far post, just wide. Yeah, again, I think you know, it, it all comes from the, the possession that they had earlier, you know, and, and you see, you know, a, a good ball here, good good flick there, and uh, you know, she looks for opportunity. It's it's what you want to do, try to, you know, always always aim to the far post, and it, it just went a little bit wide. Not sure it had enough pace to get by Ponder anyway, but 
Pretty good effort there from Burris, who I'm sure heard a yell or two from the sideline to be more aggressive when she's got an opening to take a shot. Yeah, I think so. I think, like I said, this. But they can't look for just one player to, you know, to score for them. I think they've they've been in a, been been in situations where uh, where people have gotten gotten good looks at the goal, and and uh, you know they just need to finish them off. Ashley Licata battling two Angels players for it. Pass let him down, but then Lee Summit North gets it right back. And then the Angels get it right back. Game of giveaway back and forth there in the middle. Yeah, but you see that it's, a, it's not a bad ball actually from, from the St. Joseph player to, to play down in the corner. It makes their goalkeeper come out, kick it out of bounds, and now, now their team can move up the field. So it has been, you know, back and forth, but, but I think obviously the, the more they can get in behind uh, Lee Summit, the, the better off they'll be. Tumbling throw in once again. Now this is a spot maybe that, that, that this that this throw might work. You know, it's always a long throw uh, from this from this distance. Get your players in the box and and hopefully get a get ahead on it. That'll be Maddie Dobbins able to kick it away. The goal kick for coming Jones for Lee Summit North. Entering the match is number 21, Mary Grace Ragsdale. Broncos goal kick. These throw-ins have been from Cassandra Flynn, the freshman midfielder. She's the one that got the yellow card in the first half. Now St. Joseph's here has to step up. You know, they have to try to try to play play higher up the field here, keep them locked in and, and, and win the ball in this area instead of winning the ball only in the middle of the field where we have to run 50 yards to get a goal. If they, if they win it here, they're only 20, 25 yards away from goal and, and it allows them a better opportunity to, to create a good chance. Nick McCabe, Bobby Convey from Sporting Kansas City. Here with you for this Misha Class 3 girls soccer semifinal. Join a couple of weeks off from MLS play for Sporting Kansas City as Lakata gets ahead of the field. Lakata with a nice little touch to herself and dribbling it across. Now taken away by St. Joseph's. Unable to clear though. Now it will go out on the far side. Yeah, very good play. I think they just got caught up there with everybody on this right side. She didn't have a have an outlet pass there on on the on the other flank, and, and she had a cut back, and, and her defender was right there. So, you know, maybe uh, maybe just look at their look at their spacing a little bit a little bit better going forward. Uh, and she she maybe would have had a had an outlet there on on the other flank. Flynn will try that throw in once again. Down a little further up the sideline. She's able to get some distance on that thing. Yeah, I don't. I'm, that's that's pretty impressive. I, I definitely can't can't throw it that far, and I haven't seen too many uh, too many of my teammates next to throw it that far. So, so we uh, we might we, we could see some Matt Beasler. Uh, we, we maybe show him some tape of this and. See if he wants to add that to his repertoire. Yeah, when I leave here, leave here tonight, I'll, I'll, I'll be taking the DVD to, to, to show it to him, uh, show it to him tomorrow at training, and and, uh, and 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 have him work on it for sure. He's going to trickle out and be Lee Summit North throw in. Sixty minutes played here in this match. Three-fourths of the way through. And no scoring thus far. The <laughs> Summit North after their second state title in girls soccer. St. Joseph's Academy looking for their seventh.
Yeah, it's, it's been difficult for uh, for St. Joseph here a little bit. They've, they've, they've been the aggressor here in the second half. They've, they've been able to, uh, you know, get the ball forward, but at least some of the defense has been, has been very good throughout the game, and, and their goalkeepers are, you know, definitely difficult to get it by as well. So they're, they're going to have to come up with with something, uh, you know, something special to, to get in behind them because they, they've done well throughout the game so far. One single Raymore peculiar goal on the first was all the scoring Lee Summit North gave up in the entire month of May. And they won that game 3-1. to one. So their defense working on a ninth straight shutout. They haven't given up anything here so far today either. Allie Stevenson. She's got a Lakata, Lakata physical play. Lakata into space with the goalie Ponder off her line. And another missed opportunity. Yeah, I think with, with St. Joseph going forward, they're, they're getting caught a little bit in the back and, and uh, we're giving up a little bit of space. It was a good ball through and uh, an all-around good play. Just uh, her touches took her a little bit wider than, uh, than she wanted to be. And here's Lakata again. Tries to turn, but it's blocked away. Angels can't clear it out. Battled for in the midfield. Each team getting a touch, but that's going to be a whistle and a foul on Lee Summit North. Kellogg guilty. It's a good play here, good good ball through. She uses her body here to, to get knock the defender off the ball. The goalkeeper did, did a great job there of pushing her wide and, and then obviously the other defender stepped in there at, at the last second. So an all around good defensive play, but it, you know, good play in, in general with uh, you know with, with the attack as well. When the goalkeeper is out of position but the ball is still in play, it's everybody else's responsibility as a defensive unit to come in and help your keeper out, right? Yeah, for sure. I think obviously the, the, the goalkeeper has has the uh, you know the right to challenge for the ball if if, if she sees fit and and uh, obviously it turned out to be a very good play and you know the defenders came in the box and, and, and blocked the cross. Fortunate bounce and Burris had a chance there. The ball had just enough spin on it that it kind of bounced her way and I thought it was going to be a corner kick opportunity and so did the Lee Summit North crowd but the official there said that it was last touched by Burris. I think you see it's obviously a difficult ball for the defender to deal with with, with the bouncing up, but that's it's clearly a uh, clearly a corner kick there. Nina Simon, number eight, there was looked like the last player to touch it. Now ahead for Stevenson, dangerous spot for her, big goal finisher, and Stevenson to the far post puts it in. Ali Stevenson, her 32nd goal of the year for the Missouri Gatorade Player of the Year. Yeah, great goal, great, great individual play. And you see a good, good ball through. She's one on one here. Gets on her, on her right foot. Good step over. Gets the defender looking, and a great, great finish. Far post, low and hard, and, and uh, it was a, a, a great finish. Very difficult for the for the keeper to deal with. She has been drawing a crowd all day long. When she finally got a little bit of space to work with. And a one-on-one -on -one chance was able to make it count. Yeah, that was that was a very good play, and obviously helps her team out to uh, you know get get a little bit of positive energy now going for the for the last 16 minutes here, and, and hopefully that'll be uh, good enough for them to win. Not quite the late goal drama we saw in the first semifinal, where it took all the way to the 78th minute before we saw a goal, but nevertheless. A long way into this game before we saw any scoring, and it's Allie Stevenson that breaks the scoreless tie. Now St. Joseph's looking to equalize. Down goes Neaters. A little bit of grumbling from the crowd. Now here's Champion for St. Joseph's, putting it on goal. And Dobbins able to catch it on the fly. Yeah, you can tell she's very comfortable with the long distance shots. They're gonna they're gonna have to get a get a bit closer to the goal, maybe 
get in behind for, for a breakaway or something because she looks pretty comfortable with, with the long range shots. Let's go back and look at Stevenson's play here again from a little wider angle. Yeah, very very good ball through. She gets gets her defender where she wants her on on the on the right side, makes her commit. Great finish to the to the far post, low and hard. And you know, goalie has no chance at uh, he's good. Now St. Joseph's with an opportunity far post, but just wide. Yeah, that's I mean that, that's what happens when the game's 0-0, zero, zero, one zero. You know that the team always has a chance. Good, good header five, there. Goes wide left. A good good ball through. Good touch. She tries to place it far post, just just a little bit wide. But if they continue to create those chances, you know the, they have uh, you know to be aggressive here in the last 15 minutes. Maybe maybe we'll get one back. Haley Cavanaugh with the shot on goal, but missed it wide. And now here's champion again is. St. Joseph has had a couple of opportunities since the go-ahead goal from Stevenson. Sense of urgency here for the Angels as they are behind one to nothing. Hey, you have to give it to them. They are going for it. They have been the whole game. Uh, and, and you know, they're really put numbers forward to, to create a, you know, to create chances and, and to try and score. So. They'll obviously need to continue to press here for the last, you know, 13 minutes. Osher will chip it towards the goal. Dobbins has to come up and make a play on it with Kavanaugh closing in. Yeah, I think she's had a good game. It's a good ball here to, to, to split a couple of defenders. Great ball in behind. Goalkeeper's brave comes out, but, but Kavanaugh has been very, uh, very energetic and, and uh, you know, almost got there. Now way in the back, Henschel can't chase it down. Lee side north here. with the throw in, looking ahead to Stevenson. Stevenson behind the pack, gets pushed down from behind. And we've got a foul called. And that is in the penalty box. Yeah, I think that, that's, that's for sure there. They got caught up a little bit, the, the, the center backs there, and, and didn't weren't ready for the quick throw. And obviously, at any time a player, an, you know, offensive player is going towards goal and, and, and you make any contact with them, uh, you know, it, it's normally going to be called a penalty, and that, that was a clear penalty. So this will probably be, uh, be your opportunity to put the game away for, uh, for Lee Summit. Yellow card to Anna Martin and a penalty kick to what has to be one of the most prolific goal scorers ever in the state of Missouri. Allie Stevenson puts it in with ease. No chance for Ponder to deny that one. And a 2 to nothing lead for Lee Summit North with just 13 minutes left to play in this match. Yeah, obviously a very, very confident finish there. It was, it was uh, you know, her that, that created the penalty. So you, normally when you get fouled, you step up and, 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 and take the penalty. And it was a, a, a very, a very cool, calm finish. 33 goals now for her on the season, which matches last year's total for her Lee Summit North Broncos. And that goal all but sewed up a trip to the championship game for Lee Summit North as St. Joseph's Academy will have to find a way to score two goals on a defense that hasn't given one up in a month. Yeah, they've been they've been pretty pretty impressive throughout the night. You got to got to give credit to St. Joseph though. They have been aggressive, have been trying to get forward, and have been trying to create chances. They've they've created a few, but uh, you know Lee Summit defense has been has been very steady, and, and uh, I don't see them giving up you know two goals or, or three goals here in the last 12 minutes. Angels quarter coming up. Bobby, they say the two-goal lead is the most dangerous in sports. But is there time for that to Number be a factor? Yeah, normally it, it's it's when you're up two goals in, in the first half that, that, you know, coming out the second half, the team that's up usually feels pretty good about themselves. And, and the team that's down is usually, you know, comes out as, you know, pretty aggressive. But 
you know, clearly with uh, with a two goal lead with a you know 11, 11 minutes, 12 minutes left here, you would you would hope to see out the game even if even if you you know you know give up a few chances. You know, usually a two goal two goal lead with 12 minutes left is is good enough. Champion, a second straight corner kick opportunity. This one bounds outside. Oh, sneaks through the defense a little ways, and now finally trickles down near the goal, but just less than a foot wide. Yeah, I think that's been the story of their night there. You know, they, they're, they, they're aggressive. They get in there. They, they, they get opportunity to score, and, it, and it, it just doesn't go in for them. Ruled is deflected last by Lee Summit North. Ball ping-ponging around in the area once again. Now finally cleared out by Lee Summit North. All the way out near midfield, and here's a breakaway for Stevenson once again. Player in, nice. And Stevenson leaves it over for Lakata. Lakata, she will put it on the far post, and right in the center of the back of the net. Stevenson to Lakata. That connection has been good numerous times for Lee Summit North, one direction or the other. This time it's Stevenson feeding Lakata for the goal. Three straight corner kick opportunities for St. Joseph's Academy, but the finally getting the clear out leads to this. Yeah, I think obviously with St. Joseph pushing a, a, a bunch of numbers forward, it leaves him vulnerable at the back. It's good here, like I said earlier, she draws in the, the defenders, plays a great ball into her strike partner, and a, a very good side-footed finish. Uh, you know to finish it off and and I think you know, I think she's deserved that she's, she's been working hard throughout the whole game and uh, you know it was a, a, a nice finish the three goal lead with 10 minutes to play not the most dangerous lead in sports I don't believe no I don't think so I think uh, I think two was stretching it but three is <laughs> so, <laughs> three is pretty difficult but saying that, you'd hope St. Joseph gets gets a goal here. You know, in the last ten minutes, I think they I think they do deserve it. They've they've really been you know pressing the game, been been trying to create chances, been trying to go forward, and uh, you know Lee Summit has just been a little bit more clinical with their chances. Champion puts it in play. Another corner kick opportunity for St. Joseph's Academy. And that one cleared out. Always the danger you're vulnerable to the counter when you're putting. So much effort into trying to get a goal. Yeah, I think so. I mean, obviously they're they're only leaving one one girl back and, and trying to trying to get anything going. It, it's just been you know a bit unlucky for them actually here in the in the second half. They've, they've created created a few chances, but they just haven't been able to get that last touch on it. And and, and with ten minutes left, they're definitely going to leave themselves vulnerable at the back because they're they're trying to score. And Stevenson the. Very dangerous goal scorer, obviously, for Lee Summit North, and everybody in the stadium and certainly on the field itself knows it. She really drew a crowd when she got the ball from Lakata. All three defenders converged on her, and that left Lakata wide open. Yeah, I think I, I said that earlier in the game where, you know, as, as the, the star player on the team, you draw a lot of attention, and sometimes it, uh, it's not you that, that, that uh, you know, gets the chance. It's you can create a chance for your teammate because you've drawn so much attention and, and left, uh, left someone else uh, open. So I think that's, that's what happened on that. And, and it's nice, I said, you know, for, um, you know, for to lay it across to her strike partner. And, and uh, with all the hard work she's been putting in, it's, it's nice to, uh, you know, obviously get that goal from, for herself, I'm sure. Eight and a half minutes to play in a game that's much closer than the final score is going to indicate. Lee Summit North did not get the go-ahead goal until I believe it was the 65th minute. And then two goals in quick succession after. First two from Ali Stevenson and then an assist for Stevenson to Ashley Lakata. Yeah, the first goal obviously a great, great individual play. The only, the only fault is maybe that second goal. They weren't, they weren't ready for the quick throw, um, and and maybe that that put the game out of reach. And then obviously the, the third goal, a good good ball through and and uh, and a great finish. Here's Stevenson ahead again, crossing it, but taken away by St. Joseph's Academy. Ahead comes St. Joseph's Academy. 
Now cleared out deep by Lee Summit North. Kansas City versus St. Louis battle here today, and it is Kansas City that's going to come out on top as a cross for St. Joseph's Academy headed but too high. And the Kansas City side has not had a lot of success historically. We mentioned that the first ever Kansas City side state championship was won by this Lee Summit North squad back in 2000. 16, and so maybe a new statement for the Kansas City side. The Lee Summit North is able to beat a St. Louis side private school in St. Joseph's Academy. Yeah, I think it was it was it was pretty even in the first half, but I think the uh, you know the the quality of the two forwards of uh, of Lee Summit has has, uh, has come through here with with the goals, and um, you know it, it it maybe is a maybe is a statement, but you know St. Joseph should keep their head up high. They they've they've battled. They've you know been aggressive. They've they've played well. So it uh, you know just came down to uh, you know ten minute ten minute period there. In the lineup for the Angels, number thirteen, Tommy Dressel. The St. Joseph ball. You see Coach Maureen McVeigh over there on the far side. St. Joseph's Academy head coach. Over 500 career victories. But it doesn't look like her team is going to get one here today. He stopped short in the semifinal round. Six titles for St. Joseph's Academy. Last trip to the Final Four was in 08. They won in the semifinal round but lost in the championship game and finished second. Yeah, I think it's a difficult one because, like I said, that both teams are pretty even in the first half. And then, obviously, in the second half, St. Joseph came out the more aggressive team. Uh, in, in the first, you know, 10, 15 minutes trying to create chances. But, you know, I think it, it just comes down to the solid defense of Lee Summit, not, not giving up too much, and the, the two forwards, uh, you know, finishing off their chances, being, being a little bit more clinical than, uh, you know, than, than St. Joseph forwards. Hard spill taken by Mackenzie Kellogg, but she'll shake it off and stay in the matches. We're under the... Final five minutes. And clearly reaching there was Alexandra Magaletta. Probably tough to stay composed at uh, this point when you realize the game has gotten away from you. Yeah, I think so. But I, I think there it wasn't uh, wasn't too nasty. I think they're just an aggressive team that that you know puts their heart out on on the field. It you know comes definitely from their coach for sure. And and. Uh, it's a little bit, little bit frustrating to, uh, in the last four minutes here, to to know that you're you're going to lose. But again, I don't I don't think there's anything in malicious in, in either one of those challenges. Just going for the ball. Yeah, Stevenson took a tumble there, but it was more the feet that got tangled up than anything. And now a shot, but Ponder will handle it easily. Kelsey Ponder, the freshman goalkeeper. Overall, a pretty young St. Joseph squad. Yeah, they should definitely keep their head up. I mean, obviously the goalie being being young, she had had some great saves early on to keep her team in it, and uh, you know nothing she could really do on, uh, on any of the goals. But she should definitely keep her head up. Uh, you know, along with the rest of her teammates being young, you know that they always have have next year and and, and can obviously just look at uh, you know, look at what they can do better from this game. But but I you know I, I definitely think they'll be they'll be in there for the, for the next few years. Needers just a sophomore, freshman Anna Martin. Cavanaugh a junior with another year left. Boshier a junior. Henschel a junior. Natalie Sims started. We haven't called her name much, but she is just a sophomore. So Claire Champion a senior and Michelle Schwartz the senior, but otherwise they started underclassmen here tonight. So St. Joseph's Academy certainly something to build on. And when you've got a freshman keeper who has Final Four experience, that's always a good place to build on. Yeah, for sure. She's she's, she's done done very well. Uh, you know, again, she couldn't really do much on on the three goals that are scored against her, but she came up with two or three pretty big saves. Uh, you know, to keep her team in it and 
you know, she, she shouldn't be too, uh, too mad at herself for letting those ones go in. Stevenson stays on her feet. Stevenson will play it across to Burris. Lee Summit North has scored plenty in about a five-minute stretch. Just past the midway point of the second half. They need another goal. They're up three to nothing. Probably would be happy to get another goal, but certainly have done plenty of scoring to advance to the championship game tomorrow. Yeah, I think it's now just finished out the game. You know, there's, there's a minute or two left here. Just finish it out. You know, don't, don't uh, have any of your players get injured. You know, don't, don't necessarily have to go for another goal here. Maybe, you know, maybe keep it over here in the corner. But with a three-goal lead, I'm sure they'll probably, you know, uh, you know, play it in and, and, and try and get another one. But, you know, they've done well and just need to now rest up for the, for the game tomorrow physically and mentally. Koryezu will be the opponent. And we'll play at 6 o'clock here at Blue Spring South. Koryezu, one to nothing winners today over Springfield Glendale. A goal in the 78th minute for the Chargers improved them to 22 and 2. Three goals in a short stretch for Lee Summit North is going to improve them to 24 and 3. A couple of teams that are ranked in ESPN's top 25 nationally. They're two of the top three teams in the state, according to the coaches. So ultimately, the matchup that I think. Girls soccer fans in Missouri, probably somewhat rooting for. You always like to see the underdog do well, but you also like to see a, a battle of heavyweights in a championship matchup, and it seems like certainly the two best teams in this class in the state are going to battle it out tomorrow. Yeah, I think that's, that's obviously uh, you know, the intentions Nine, of the, of the seedings, I guess you seven, can say. You know, the, the, the best five, two teams play against four, each other uh, three, you know, to, to see who goes to the championship. One, and that will wrap it up as the final seconds tick off. Lee Summit North, they get two goals from their senior superstar, Ali Stevenson. She adds an assist as Ashley Licata gets her 13th goal of the year. Stevenson now with 33 goals to her name this season. We'll be back to Blue Spring South to give our final thoughts. After this, Lee Summit North victorious today in the semifinals. Lee Summit North advances to tomorrow's championship game against Coriezu of St. Louis. They beat a St. Louis private school today. St. Joseph's Academy going down to defeat ninth straight shutout for Lee Summit North. We'll show you the goals, but that Lee Summit North defense was impressive today as well. Yeah, I think it, obviously this first goal, great ball in, good step over. Low and hard to the far post. Most, you know, 99 out of 100 times you're going to score. Know, got, got caught up there on the uh, you know on the throw in to, to create the penalty, but a very very easy penalty. Got her head up here, look for a strike partner. Good touch forward, and an, another good finish to the uh, to the back post. Keeper can't do much about them three goals. So Lee Summit North advances to the championship game. They now stand at 24 and three on the season. Season and Allie Stevenson, who's heading to Oklahoma State, got two goals on the night. Well, thanks so much to Bobby Convey, Sporting Kansas City midfielder. Thanks so much for your help tonight. Nick McCabe saying so long for our entire Metro Sports crew. Good night from Blue Spring South.